Good morning. This is Brian Ray, and I'm coming to you from Stone Mountain, Georgia. And it's time for this week's online Bible study. This week, we're going to be in the book of John, the Gospel of John, chapter 9, verses 35 through 41. The Gospel of John, chapter 9, verses 35 through 41. And let's begin by reading those verses. Verse 35. It says, Jesus heard they Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. Talking about the blind man. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? The man asked. Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, You have now seen. He said, you have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Verse 38. Then the man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. Jesus said, for judgment I have not come into this world, so that the blind will see, and, that, and those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him heard him say this and asked, what, are we blind too? Verse 41, Jesus said, if you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. And that's John chapter 9, verses 35 through 41. Continue on, continuing on with the episode of the man born blind that Jesus restored, gave him back his sight or gave him his sight. Throughout chapter 9, we have seen the courage of a man born blind. This man, who had been blind all his life and made his living from begging, met Jesus one day. And after that, his life was never the same. For Jesus gave him sight. He removed his blindness. And so just imagine, this man's been blind all his life. He was born blind. He begged. That's how he uh, supported himself. Then one day this man met Jesus and Jesus restored his sight. That had to be an amazing day for that man. It would have changed his life. And as I said, it changed his life forever when he was given his sight. Though receiving one's sight is good, it is not the most important thing a person needs. A person also needs his spiritual blindness removed. And this has not happened to the formerly blind man yet. So he's been given his physical sight, but spiritually he's still blind. And to be blind spiritually is not good. And so he's, he can, has his sight now where he can see physically, but he's still spiritually blind. So in our text today, we see how people respond to the light of Jesus. There are two types of people in our text. We want to see how people respond. Here are two types of people. One is the formerly blind man. That's one person in the text. That's the type of person in the text, the formerly blind man. He's in the text. And two, the Pharisees. And so we're going to see how these two people, these two person and a group of people, how they respond to Jesus, how they respond to the light of the world, the formerly blind man and the Pharisees. Each has been exposed to the light of the world, yet one accepts the light, and the other rejects it. And today we still have two types of people. Those who accept the light and have eternal life. And those who reject the light and are already condemned. And so just like we have in this episode, we have one person who accepts the light. Then we have another group who rejects the light. In the world today, some of you listen to me. You're in one or two groups. You either accept the light or you reject the light. The only two, only two classes you can be in. Either you accept the light or you reject the light. And as I said, are, are already condemned. Listen to what it says in John chapter 3, verse 16. John 3, 16 through 21. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, 
but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Verse 20. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. And so as I said, everyone listening to me today, everyone has either accepted or rejected the light. And we're going to go back to our text. And notice how John begins with the formerly blind man in verse 35. John chapter 9, verse 35. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. Talking about the blind man, they had thrown him out. Thrown him out of the synagogue. He could no longer worship and study there. Jesus heard they had thrown him out. And when, they, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Do you believe in the Son of Man? The fact that the man was thrown out by the Pharisees would have been common knowledge. For the event, for the events of this chapter have not been have not occurred in secret. And so this man has been thrown out of the synagogue. He's been thrown out of his place of worship because he refuses to uh, reject Jesus and reject saying that he won't go along with the Pharisees saying that this man didn't uh, give him his sight. And so he's been thrown out. And now Jesus seeks this man out and he finds him. And, um, and as I said, this, these things that are going on, they're not done in secret, dog. Everybody knows what's going on. Because imagine this man who was born blind is now seeing. You know, word about that would have been spreading to everybody. This man been blind all his life. You've seen him begging. You've seen him. And now he can see. And he says this man named Jesus is the one who gave him his sight. And so word is spreading all over the place. And the Pharisees try to get him to say that it wasn't Jesus who did it to him. And when he wouldn't, they throw him out of the synagogue, throw him out of the place of worship. And now uh, we're going on. So Jesus seeks him out because he's been thrown out. But notice how Jesus goes to him. Jesus seeks him out. Jesus goes to him. For when a person is in need, he can count on Jesus to be there for him. If you're in need, Jesus is going to be there for you. And especially when what happens to you is because you took a stand for him. Talk about taking a stand for Jesus. As the blind man has. We looked at that last week, how the blind man had taken a stand for Jesus. And because he took a stand, he's been thrown out. And so Jesus seeks him out because this man is in trouble. He's having troubles, and so Jesus seeks him out. He'll seek you out, too, when you take a stand for him. He won't let you go through that alone. When Jesus says, do you believe in the Son of Man? Look again at verse 35. It says, Jesus heard that he had been thrown out. They had thrown him out. And when he found him, he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? Okay? He says, do you believe in the Son of Man? And so when Jesus says, do you believe in the Son of Man? He does not mean, do you believe he exists? Okay, that's not what he's talking about. He's not saying, do you believe in his existence? No, what he means is, do you put your trust in him? Do you put your trust in him? Same thing today. We say, do you believe in Jesus? We're not saying, do you believe that he was physically alive? But are you trusting in him? Those are two different things. Because some people say, yes, I believe there was a historical Jesus. I believe, yes, he was a real person but I'm not trusting in him as my savior. So it's two different questions. And so here Jesus is asking, do you put your trust in the son of man? Now the title son of man speaks of Jesus's role as a judge of all men when they stand before him after this world has passed away. So the son of man speaks of how he's going to be the judge of the world. Listen to what it says in John chapter five. John chapter five, verse 28 through 30. Listen to what it says. Do not be amazed at this, for a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done good will rise to live, 
and those who have done evil will rise to be condemned. Verse 30, by myself I can do nothing. I judge only as I hear, and my judgment is just. For I seek not to please myself, but him who sent me. And so there's a day coming, there's a time coming when Jesus is going to sit as judge of all people. And so this speaks, of, the Son of Man speaks of his role as a judge. But it also speaks of his role as the one who brings the salvation of the kingdom of God. Listen to what it says in Daniel chapter 7. So it also breaks, speaks of the one who brings salvation for the kingdom of God. Daniel chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. Listen to what it says. In my vision at night, I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All peoples, nations, and men of every language worship him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. And so there is talking about the Son of Man. That's Daniel talking about the Son of Man. And so another role, not only will he be judged, but he's going to bring this kingdom of God. He's going to bring the kingdom of God. And so Jesus' question is, are you trusting in this person? That's what Jesus is asking him when he says, are you trusting in the Son of Man? Are you, do you believe in the Son of Man? He's saying, are you trusting in the Son of Man? Are you trusting in this person? But the man doesn't know who he is. Listen, listen to what he said in verse 36. The blind man, he said, Who is he, sir? The man asked, Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus is asking him, Do you believe? Do you trust in the Son of Man? The blind man said, Who is he? I don't know who he is. Tell me who he is so that I may trust in him. So that I may believe in him. This man has a willingness to, to what this man has a willingness to do what is right. He only needs to be pointed in the right direction. And so this man who was formerly blind, he wants to do the right thing, but he has to get some direction. He has to be pointed in the right direction. He doesn't, he doesn't know who this son of man is. And some people today are the same way. They want to do right, but they need someone to show them. Today, people are the same way. They want to do the right thing, but... They need somebody to show them what the right thing is. That's how some people are. Now, now that's where we as faithful Christians come in to the picture. We are to, we are to be there to help them find their way to God. Those people who are out there looking, those people who are out there searching, they, they're looking for Jesus, they're looking for God, but they can't find their way. We as believers, we as Christians, we're to help point those people to Jesus. We're not to let them just stay out there and wander on their own but we're to take them and help show them the way. And the answer Jesus gives him will probably shock him. Notice what Jesus says, this man saying, who is the son of man? That's what the formerly blind man says. And notice verse 37, Jesus said, you have now seen him. Imagine that, you have now seen him. This man had been blind all his life. He says, you have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Now, who was speaking with him? Jesus was. And so Jesus is saying that he is the Son of Man. Jesus says that he is the Son of Man, the one who, the one he is now looking at and speaking to. So the man says, who is this Son of Man? So that I can believe in him. Jesus says, I'm him. I'm the Son of Man. Now, can't you imagine this man shaking his head and blinking his eyes in amazement? When he hears that, I, Jesus say, I am him. I am the son of man. That's who I'm talking about. I'm talking about myself, the person you're looking at, the person you're speaking to. He probably was amazed to learn that. The man who gave, the man who gave him sight, the man he now sees is the son of man. Now he had been willing to put his trust in him, and he does. Because remember what he said in verse 37? He says, you said, you said, you have, I mean, in verse 36, he says, tell me so that I may believe in him. Okay. He said, who is he, sir? 
tell me so that I may believe in him. So the blind, formerly blind man said, tell me who he is and I will believe in him. And when he finds out it is Jesus, notice what happens in verse 38. The man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. When he found out Jesus was the son of man, he believed. And not only did he believe, but he worshiped. Again, verse 38 said, the man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. At that moment, he put his trust in Jesus Christ. This man was in spiritual blindness. But, not, but when he recognized the light, he responded by making him his Lord. And so he was, he had been physically blind and Jesus had given him his physical sight, but he still remained spiritually blind. And Jesus is talking to him. Jesus tells him, I am the son of man and that you've got to believe in him. And when he understands that and when he understands Jesus is the son of man, he says, I believe. And so now he not only does he have his physical sight, but he has his spiritual sight also. When a person comes to Jesus, he must come with a willingness to make him Lord. You, when you come to Jesus, you can't come saying you're going to do it your way. You, when you come, you say you're going to do it God's way. You come to God by faith. You put your faith in him. You can't come with your own ideas. You come with the ideas that God says are right. And God says, you put your faith in me. You put your faith in Jesus, that's how you, ha that's how you have eternal life. It's through no, no other way. You can't come with your own idea. But notice, notice too how he began to worship him. Okay, notice in verse 30 it says, I mean, yeah, verse 38, the man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. He believed in Jesus, and immediately he worshiped him. Worship him. It was a natural response of the heart. Just as a hurting child, spirits will be lifted when he sees his mother coming. It is, the, it is not forced. It is natural. And it is natural. And the worship of Jesus by all Christians will be natural also. To worship Jesus, the Son of Man, that's just a natural thing for us to do as a believer. When you believe in Jesus Christ, when you put your faith in him, it just comes naturally that you're going to worship him. And that's what we see in that man. He said, I believe. He said, I believe that you, I believe you, Jesus. You're the son of man. And when he believed, he just worshiped naturally. It was all one natural thing. When we, we as Christians, we worship Jesus because he is our savior. But now we began to see those who reject the light. So in the blind man, we see how the blind man accepted the light. Okay, he accepted the light of the world, but notice in verse 39, we're going to start seeing those who reject the light. Verse 39 says, Jesus said, for judgment I have come into this world, so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. For judgment I have come into this world, so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. Now compare this with John chapter 3, verse 16. This one I said there, and this one says in John chapter 3, verse 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And one, and one Jesus says he did not come to condemn, but to save. Mm -hmm. And then, and then the other, but he did not come, he did not come, he did not, and one, Jesus says, he did not come to condemn the world, but to save. And in the other, he seems to say something different. In reality, Jesus is saying the exact same thing. The purpose of Jesus' coming was to save. The purpose of Jesus' coming was to save. But all those who reject him, but all those who reject him, all those who reject him are judged automatically. His purpose for coming was to save. But if you reject him, then you're judged automatically by rejecting him. So while judgment was not his reason for coming, it is the natural result of all those who reject him. So he didn't come to judge. He came to bring salvation. But when you reject him, then you have judgment automatically. Just as with the son. The, sun, the purpose of the sun is not to cast shadows, okay? The purpose of the sun is not to cast shadows. 
but as the sun shines, shadows are formed. It is a natural result of its shining. The purpose of the sun is not to make shadows, but just by the fact when the sun shines, as a natural result, there are also going to be shadows formed by the sun just doing what it does of shining. Same thing's true about Jesus. He didn't come to judge. He came to save. But when he saves and those who reject him, it's just natural that they are condemned because they rejected his coming. They rejected who he is, and so they are condemned. Jesus did not come to judge man, but if a man rejects Jesus, judgment will come naturally. He came to save you, but if you reject him, then judgment is going to be what you get. Now, the Pharisees were the perfect example of what Jesus says. Those who see will become blind, but they, but they don't think so. So Jesus said, those who see, they will become blind. And so the Pharisees are that are an example of those people, but they don't think so. Listen to what it says in verse 40. Some Pharisees who were with him heard him say this and asked, what are, what are we blind to? What are we blind to? That's what some of the Pharisees says. Have you ever noticed how some people can see all the, fa can see all the faults of others but they're blind to their own. Now, this is how the Pharisees are. They claim to have spiritual sight and will tell you that you do not, yet they are blind. Jesus says they are blind and they are blind, but they, they have pointed out all your facts, but yet they are the ones that are blind. And there are many people on the rolls of the church to today that think they have spiritual sight, but in reality are blind. The church is full of people who think they are believers, but they've never put their trust in Jesus Christ. They might be going to church every week. They might be singing the songs of the church every week, but there was never a point in time where they trusted in Jesus as their Savior. They never did what this formerly blind man did, said, I believe, I trust in the Son of Man. They've never done that. And if you've never done that, then you're still lost in your sin because you don't have spiritual sight. And so uh, just the fact that you go to church doesn't mean anything. You've got to accept Jesus as your Savior. So Jesus responds to them. Listen to what Jesus says in verse 41. Jesus said, if you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. If you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. So Jesus says, if you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. What Jesus is saying to them is that they claim to have spiritual sight. But when the Son of Man came, they rejected him. If they really had spiritual sight, they would have responded differently to him. Jesus is the Son of Man. He came and he was doing the sign to the Son of Man. He was doing the sign to the Messiah. And yet these religious leaders, when they saw Jesus, they rejected him. And Jesus is saying, you know, if you were really, if you really had spiritual sight, you not, would not have, re you would not have rejected me when I came. But that's what they did. They rejected him. Whereas the blind man, the formerly blind man, when he learned who Jesus was, he accepted him. He embraced him. He accepted him by faith. But these religious leaders, they do the opposite. They see, they learn, but they reject what they see. They reject what they've learned. A person who knows nothing of salvation of the salvation of God and has never heard of Jesus is not a sinner in the sense of rebelling against the commands of God. I'm not saying they're not a sinner. I'm saying they're not a sinner in the sense of rebelling against the commands of God because they hadn't learned them. He will have other sins, but his blindness means that his sins are not against the light since his eyes have not yet been opened. All right, but the Pharisees or a righteous person sees the light and rejects it. Thus, their eyes are closed and their guilt remains. So you got these two people. Some people, they're out there, they're sinning and they don't know they're sinning or they don't understand who Jesus is. And when they begin to learn who he is, they accept him and they have faith and they put their faith in him and they have the light. 
and uh, because they put their faith in him. But then some, they just continue on when they learn who he is, just continue on in their sin. And that's what the Pharisees did. Now, all of us, all of us who are listening to me right now, all of us fall into two categories, one of two categories of people. We are believers in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, or we are not. Those are only two categories. You either believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or you don't. There's no in-between. Now, if you are not a believer, then that means you have, you, that mean, if you are not a believer today, you have been exposed to the light, because I've been telling you about the light. So you've been exposed to the light. You've been listening to me, so you've been exposed to the light. What, what will you do? You know, are you going to be like the Pharisees, or are you going to be like the formerly blind man? You've heard the truth. You've heard that Jesus is the light of the world and that salvation is through him. And so now you got to decide if you've never accepted Jesus as your savior. Now you got to decide what are you going to do with that truth? Are you going to continue on in your sin and reject the light of the world? Or are you going to embrace the light of the world by faith? That's, that's your choice. Nobody can make you do anything. I hope you will embrace Jesus by faith. And make him your Lord and Savior. And that way you can have eternal life. But if you continue on in your sin. If you continue on to reject Jesus. If you don't accept him by faith. Then you're going to have eternal damnation. The choice is yours. Nobody can make you decide. Either way. You get to choose what you're going to do. Are you going to embrace Jesus? Are you going to accept him by faith? Or are you going to continue on in your sin? And if you'd like more information on how you can accept Jesus by faith, if you'll send me a message through Facebook Messenger, I'll be glad to send you more information on how you too can accept Jesus by faith and have eternal life. Because remember, Jesus came to save the world, but if you reject that salvation that he brought, then you're already condemned. If you're not a believer today, that means you're already condemned. You're already on that path towards hell. And that's not where God wants you to be because that's why Jesus came so that you can get off that path. But it's up to you to decide. If you'd like more information on that, as I say, just send me a message through Facebook Messenger and I'll be glad to get you more information on how you too can become a believer in Jesus Christ. Well, you be blessed and I'll see you again next week. Bye now.